Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the great pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I am good, Brian. Back from the Belmont at Saratoga meeting, which was uh, quite an event, quite experience, probably about as crowded as I've ever been uh, at a racetrack. Yeah, that's uh, that's saying something because I've been to Saratoga. I remember Alidar affirmed in the Travers, and and I thought that was a uh, a big crowd, but uh, I guess this outdid it. Matt, hey, this week, uh, congratulations to Doorknock, but the Belmont Stakes is kind of the uh, unofficial divider of the season. The Triple Crown is over. We go into the uh, championship half of the winning uh, championship winning half of the season, if you will. So Matt and I are going to do a special show today. These are horses that we can't wait to see run in the second half for various reasons. Obviously, if we're only doing 10, our top 10, there are so many interesting horses that we had to leave off. Tell us in the comments uh, who you wanted to see on the list that we didn't get to touch on. But these are 10, as agreed upon by Matt Shipman and Brian Zipsy. Ready to go? Ready to roll, Matt? Absolutely. Let's go. All right. Let, let's, let's go in alphabetical order. These are not in top 10 order. These are in alphabetical order. We're going to start with Bookham Dano. Bookham Dano, Matt. Uh, hey, Jay marks the spot for this Jersey bread gelding couple of Jersey breads talking about another Jersey bread. Uh, the, the breeding uh, is, uh, you know, he wasn't uh, sought after early on. Trainer Derek Ryan of Musket Man fame has this uh, Jersey bread gelding going really good right now. Oh, absolutely, Brian. You know, and uh, it, it's a big year for Jersey breads. There's another really nice Jersey bread uh a three-year-old out there also that's going to be running at Mon. I think we'll be running at Monmouth uh, in the Pegasus Stakes on Saturday. But hey, it's a it, uh, it's great to see the the Jersey Breads doing so well. And let me tell you what, Brian, this horse is fast. Oh yeah, the the turn of foot because he doesn't go right to the lead, but the turn of foot on Bookham Dan O'Matt is serious and. We knew this last year, and uh, I guess he lost only one race after some big wins last year where he uh, stretched out to a mile. First time over six furlong in Nashua, and he was run in the Nashua to run second. Uh, same thing this year. He's got only one loss, two huge performances at seven furlongs, one at Tampa Bay, one at Belmont at Saratoga just this last weekend with a big win in the Woody Stevens. He exploded to take over that race. Of course, his only loss this year was Forever Young running him down in the very late stages of the uh, Saudi uh, Derby. And, of course, those two horses were way ahead of the rest in that rich race. Oh, yeah, Brian. And and, and you, you put that performance in that race uh, in the Saudi Derby, going a distance of ground, uh, losing to uh, Forever, uh, Forever Young, who ran so well. Uh, in the Kentucky Derby also, uh, it, it, it's really hard to find anything to knock about Bookham Dano. You can see how excited I am about this guy. Oh, yeah. Bookham Dano is an exciting three-year-old. We love the Jay Breads. Uh, a gelding, hopefully he'll be around for a while. And uh, I could see him pointing towards either the Breeders' Cup Sprint or the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. We're excited about Bookham Dano. Uh, the next horse on our list, Matt, has never run in the country, but uh, City of Troy is coming. I, I have a, a connection with some of the Coolmore people. They, they're they excited to run City of Troy, who just won the Derby in Travers. And, and that's an interesting thing in its own right now. We don't see a lot of Epson Derby winners running in the Travers. They think he's going to love dirt this son of Justify. Very impressive so far for Aiden O'Brien. Yeah, uh, that's that will be exciting to see. I guess this is one of the top three-year-olds in uh, Europe, and and the fact they're bringing him over to the dirt is really interesting. You might expect him to be in those uh, in those big three-year-old uh, turf races, the 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 turf tierra that they have at, at, in New York. But uh, hey, 
it's Aiden O'Brien and and Coolmore. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see this one. A Justify out of a Galileo, you know, you know, it's got great breeding uh, uh, coming from those folks. Yeah, Together Forever was a, a Group One winner as a two-year-old filly in Europe. Uh, they brought her to Justify, and we have an interesting horse. Aiden O'Brien, Matt, I don't know how closely you've been following City of Troy, but Aiden O'Brien has been talking about this horse in a different mm -hmm. manner than he's talked about just any, just about any other horse in his career. And, and he's saying that this is truly one of the best, if not the best horse he's ever had. And that's saying a lot for Aiden O'Brien because he's literally had dozens and dozens of group one winners of, of champions over there. And uh, he he threw in a he threw in a clunker to begin his year in, in the Guineas over there, but then O'Brien had uh, lost no confidence in the two year old champion Epsom Derby. He said he'll be just fine. He's an outstanding horse. Sure enough, he won the Epsom Derby easily. He's by far the highest rated three year old in all of Europe, and he's coming to dirt for the Travers. I, I'm pretty sure from everything I've heard that we will see him at Saratoga in. A couple months so that is exciting wait to see that uh, moving on matt we, we got to talk about this next horse if you look at the money one you see the record here on the graphics for these uh races if you look at the money one on this next horse um he, he doesn't fit in with the rest of them matt he he's uh he's woefully short of of a whole lot of millionaires on this list but uh we're looking at the potential and of course a uh, horse of the year of 2022 was his half brother Flightline, and, and Flightline was probably more than the average horse of the year. Flightline was something special, trained by John Sadler, out of that mare, feathered by Indian Charlie. This is his half brother. Doesn't get much better than Curlin, as the sire of the half brother of this uh, of Flightline half brother. Of course, he was a son of Tappet. He is a son of same trainer. I was impressed by his debut. Yeah, hey, you didn't have to look uh, too far to figure out uh, what why we were talking about this horse. You see the flight in his uh, in his name and John Sadler. Uh, yeah, for all the Flightline fans out there, you should be excited as excited as Brian and I are about seeing this horse down the road. Yeah, Eagles Flight really could be any kind, and and I'm always a little skeptical of of brothers or uh, full brothers or full sisters or half sisters because often they're never as good. But as we saw with Dornock, uh, that's there's always exceptions to the rule. Dornock, of course, the full brother to Mage winning the Belmont Eagles. Flight, I tell you what, the work were really good coming into debut uh, recently at Santa Anita, late last month at Santa Anita. And he ran to it because there was some trouble. He was bumped. He was green. He had to split horses. And he looked very good in winning that six furlong maiden race. So the world uh, is full. This horse is full of potential. The world, uh, sky is the limit for Eagles flight, flight lines, little brother. Matt, next on our list, we're going to jump to a horse that we've already been on the show. The horse that ran down Bookham Dano over in Saudi Arabia and Forever Young, wow, has Forever Young had a great career. It didn't start till October of last year. Of course, he was still a two-year-old at that point, but he rattled off three wins in Japan. Then he goes to Saudi Arabia. Then he goes to uh, Dubai. Then he goes to the toughest one of all, the Kentucky Derby. He hasn't missed a beat. Forever Young is for real and they are pointing for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, no doubt that they'll be back uh, with uh, with this guy. You mentioned his impeccable record, and he was part of that so so exciting blanket finish in the Kentucky Derby, where he was uh, involved in that in the bumping with Sierra Leone. But still, uh, the three of them separated by less than a head. Forever Young is another one that we are looking forward to seeing. Oh, yeah, Forever Young is. And that Kentucky Derby, I tell you what, I'm a little down on the three-year-old American males, to be honest, as they seem to be beating each other. Mystic Dan sees the gray, Doorknock, your three triple crown winners, all nice horses, but no one's really stood 
above the rest as of yet in that division. Forever Young, he was being bumped by uh, uh, Sierra Leone, as you said, the, the entire stretch of that Kentucky Derby. And for him to run on and keep rallying as well as he did, and after having all the travel and all those races, really impressive. Uh, I'd like to see what he does with a little bit of rest after the Kentucky Derby, coming back later this year in Japan before coming back for the Breeders' Cup Classic for Rever Young is a horse that we had to have list. Uh, the next, next horse on the list is already an American, Matt. Uh, Matic had her six race, six race winning streak snapped. You saw it in the Ogden Phipps there on the Belmont undercard. I, I don't know about you, but I thought Idiomatic was the best horse in that race. Yeah, I agree, Brian. Uh, and, and, you have to talk about the field that was in that race. It was not a big field in numbers, but it was a very, very strong field, uh, really talented, winning kind of older fillies and mares. Idiomatic, uh, as Brian said, uh, was probably the best. Didn't get an ideal trip. Idiomatic is a horse that likes to be right up on the pace. Got out of the gate a little bit slowly for her didn't get quite as close as normal so that right there uh, um um uh, put her a little bit against what she usually does but she came running and just missed to uh, i guess uh, is her main rival in the country right now uh, uh randomize yeah there, there are some good older mares out there adair manor should be mentioned Scylla. Uh, on up and comer for trainer Bill Mott should be mentioned, but yeah, randomized. It was nice to see randomized uh, return to her best that we saw late last year because her first race not great, not bad, but not great. So randomized ran a race, but Matt, the 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 race into the first turn really for me was the race because randomized was able to set a a reasonable pace alone on the inside while idiomatic was carried out pretty pretty well wide going into that first turn as she tried to get a little closer and i, I think that cost her a, a few lengths and and of course the uh the margin at the end was very slim because this curlin mare just kept on coming 14 starts 10 wins two seconds two thirds uh mm -hmm. idiomatic to me is still the best older female in the country and we look forward to what she can do off her first loss in a long time. Now, next on the list is uh, the three-year-old male, at least in the classic distances, because we are, we did talk about Bookham Dano already. But uh, of the horses that ran in the Triple Crown races, uh, if I had to pick an American that is, uh, well, is the most interesting horse for me moving forward into the, the second half of the year, it's mind frame. And um, I, I give you kudos because you were, you, he was your pick in the Belmont and he ran a very big race. He ran better than I thought he would considering his lack of seasoning going into that top 10 for a long race. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, as I said last week, I, I picked the horse because I really felt like he could be any kind. And, and that might turn out to be true. It was that inexperience brian it was that greenness that maybe cost mind frame the race because coming down the stretch he was making a nice move uh uh coming after doorknock and felt the felt the crop for the first time obviously he didn't in those runaway wins in his first two starts felt a, a left-handed crop and reacted to that and jumped a whole bunch of paths out uh and uh, uh and that certainly cost him distance he recovered fairly quickly dove back in to uh to try and come after doorknock and got within a half length doorknock was still pretty game though in the end yeah Door doorknock was, was still running at the end doorknock ran a good race but mind frame and sierra leone of course with all sorts of trouble again don't don't get me started about sierra leone all sorts of trouble was coming fast at the end too. Ran a big race, and he had a seven furlong maiden and a mile sixteenth allowance race to his to to his past performances. That's it. So for him to run that big in the mile and a quarter at Saratoga Belmont Stakes, and yeah, without the greenness, he he very well could have won this Belmont Stakes. So mind frame still is 
a horse of a uh, of vast potential. I love the breeding for going long. Uh, if, if there's an American three-year-old to win the Breeders' Cup Classic this year, I, mind frame would probably be at the top of my list. And we want to see more after only three starts from the son of Constitution mind frame. Um, you're talking about who is the most likely horse to be horse of the year at the end of the season, Matt. Um, I think you have to look to National Treasure. National Treasure has won the Pegasus World Cup early in the year. He's won the Met Mile uh, impressively at Saratoga. And uh, now he, uh, we, we can also talk about the trip to Saudi Arabia he made in between where he, he ran a good race. He was beaten a length and a half in Saudi Arabia. So I'm looking at National Treasure as the horse who probably deserves to be on top of the uh, race for horse of the year at this point. Yeah, well, I agree completely, Brian. I, I think he was actually on top in the latest uh, uh, NTRA poll that, that reflects who the voters think should be uh, horse of the year. And I voted for uh, I voted for National Treasure. The fact that he has big wins in big races at the very beginning of the year in the Pegasus World Cup and now in the Met Mile uh, 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 is an indication of his quality that doesn't usually happen some horses run well for a few months in the beginning and then others later in the year so uh a uh, lot to look forward to from uh national treasure well it, it should happen Matt. it should happen more often uh, and we've seen horses over the years who have been able to sustain their excellence i think national treasure became a, a real threat to be the best hor dirt horse in America or the best horse in America when they decided that he was a speed horse and he should be out there. Uh, I know there was a time where they, they tried to rate him just a little bit off the lead, and I don't think that worked. He wants the lead, does this on a quality road. The winner of the Preakness, it's, it's nice to see a Triple Crown race winner coming back with a, a really nice career. Uh, Pegasus World Cup, Met Mile, impressive. He can go a mile, he can go nine, he can go 10. National Treasure um, deserving to be on top of the NTRA poll at this point in the year and uh, maybe a new favorite for the Breeders' Cup Classic because I, I think that's where they would point him more so than the Dirt Mile, which he lost by a desperate nose to the Horse of the Year last year, Cody's Wish, in, the, in of course, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. All right, Matt, we're going to keep going here. And, and we, we have two Bob Baffert horses in a row on the list. And... Uh, this horse, I'm a little worried about when we're going to see this horse again, but this horse had to be on the list just because those first three races, wow. I mean, the way he won his maiden, his debut uh, in October, the way he won the Bob Hope, a grade three out in Santa Anita, and the way he won the Robert B. Lewis, he too, you said it about Monframe, I'm going to say it about Nisos, he could be any kind. Yeah, that that's for sure. I mean, we, uh, you know, saw so much from Nisus and have heard so much about Nisus uh, in the beginning part of the year. This is a horse that certainly has the breeding to go uh, any kind of distance out of a Kentucky Derby winner and Nyquist and a Bernardini mare, Brian. Uh, 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 impressive breeding, impressive performances. But I, like you, Brian, at this point, am getting a little bit concerned about when we're going to see Nisos run again. Yeah, he, he won his first three races uh, from October through February uh, by almost nine lengths average per start. Uh, he uh, he was supposed to run in a, a few races out in California, then be pointed towards the Preakness. It, it didn't happen. He's on the shelf. He hasn't had a workout of late. So nice hosts. We're, we're hoping to hear good news in the summer. Sometimes Baffert is able to bring them back in the summer. And Nisos would be a welcome addition to the second half of 2024 if we can see uh, him again. By the way, Nyquist doesn't get a lot of uh, talk as one of the best oh. sires in America. And Nyquist just, uh, he, he he puts out good horses, good horses, good horses all the time. And Nyquist is, is definitely one of our top sires. Matt, next on our list is uh, another horse that we're kind of watching the... Uh, uh, workouts for because, of course, we have not seen Senor Buscador in the United States uh, since uh, uh, just missing 
in the Pegasus World Cup. Remember, he was uh, coming at uh, National Treasure in that big race. Those two were all alone in the Pegasus World Cup earlier this year. The good news is Senor Buscador is back on the work tab after his runs in the Middle East. Hey, Brian, all you got to do is take a look at uh, the amount of money that this guy has won in his career already, over $12 million. And you, and it's like, yeah, I guess we got to put Senior Buscador uh, on that list. He did have a that big win uh, in the Saudi Cup. Yeah, and of course, the Saudi Cup was a big portion uh, of those uh, huge earnings for Senior Buscador. Buscador. You know, Senor Buscador is a horse we taught, we both liked as a two-year-old, two-year-old stakes winner. Uh, that, that's going on four years ago, Matt. This is a, this is a six-year-old, and he had all kinds of injury problems as a three-year-old, and they were uh, patient. Nice uh, New, New Mexico mare they have there, and they brought him to mine shaft, and this horse has always liked to come from the clouds. And uh, he's had success at Del Mar for trainer Todd Fincher before. That's where the Breeders' Cup will be this year. And Matt said it, 12, uh, just about $12.7 million uh, for this horse that they really showed patience with. And he's gotten better and better as an older horse. They're being patient with him again. But again, he's back on the work tab at San Luis Rey uh, Training Center after his uh, win in the Saudi Cup and then a third in the Dubai World Cup. A big threat uh, along with National Treasure, I, I think, as uh, as well, maybe the two best old dirt males in the country. And, and again, that would be more of the same from that great Pegasus World Cup stretch run they had very early this year. Finally, Matt, number 10, you know I couldn't leave my favorite filly off the list, uh, Thorpedo Anna, Matt. Uh, Thorpedo Anna may be the best three-year-old filly we've seen in several years. She's starting to look that way, the daughter of Fast Anna. Big potential as a two-year-old. She won his first two races at Churchill Downs and Keeneland for absolute fun. I reversed the order. It was actually Keeneland, Churchill Downs. Then she got beat in her first stretch out. Uh, short rest between those first three races. She was second in the grade two goldenrod. But uh, since getting a little bit of rest and coming back this year, she has been an absolute powerhouse. Yes, and this is a big, strong horse, Brian. Wow, that performance in the Acorn up at Saratoga as part of the Belmont Racing Festival. That was just a wow performance, Brian. Uh, going a mile and an eighth again, like uh, in the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, what a great performance. And I don't know, Brian, we've been talking about a lot of three-year-olds. Maybe this is the best three-year-old, Brian, male or female. Oh yeah, at least at least in America, I, I wouldn't argue that at all. She, I would, she, she's at the top of my list. She does this so easily. I mean, the fantasy is when I saw the fantasy, I, I thought this is your Kentucky Oaks winner because the fantasy she did it so easily. That Grade Two race at Oakland Park in a return first race as a three year old. She's only gotten better. Uh, a huge field in Kentucky Oaks. She really won for fun, and, and I think the Acorn. As good as the fantasy was, I think the Oaks was probably better. And I think the Acorn was probably better than the Kentucky Oaks. Um, you could check Brian Hernandez. Uh, and this has happened before where he's just he's just sitting chilly with a ton of horse, with good horses or a good horse ahead of her, as was the case in the Acorn. And uh, you knew it was just a matter of time before Hernandez would say, let's go. And when he did, uh, there was no stopping her. And uh, yeah, there's been a lot of conjecture whether she would have won the Belmont over Doorknock and, and Mindframe and Sierra Leone the next day. Uh, a different distance, nine furlongs to ten furlongs. But I, I, I'm not going to say after what we saw in the Acorn. Yeah, I, I, I sure am not uh, either. And, and uh, you know, I don't need to see her uh, uh, run against the guys to know what a what a great talent that she is right we don't need to see her run against the males to know how good she is on the other hand i want to see it happen whether, whether it be the travers or at some other point in fact one of my disappointments of of the great three-year-old fillies of the last uh, couple decades uh rachel alexandra 
ran in the Preakness, the Haskell, the Woodward, as it's real Philly. Songbird never did that. And, and that was always a little disappointing to me that Songbird never tested the males. I get it. I understand it. You got a great Philly. You don't have to. Why push her in there? I would like to see Thorpedo Anna try the males at least once. And, and McPeak seems to be a trainer that's very willing to do that. So we'll, we'll see. Again, so many horses that we left off this top 10 horses we can't wait to see in the second half of 2024. But it was fun to put together these 10. Leave in the comments who we left off that you want to see as you subscribe to Horse Racing Nation here on our YouTube channel and uh, turn on those notifications. Matt, let me get a parting shot from you, my friend. Absolutely, Brian. Hey, I want to thank all the Horse Center fans that I met uh, uh, in Saratoga, in downtown Saratoga, all over the place. Thank you for saying hi. I'll be at Monmouth Park on Saturday. There you go, Matt. I, I think we have the Pegasus Saturday, and a week from Saturday we have the Ohio Derby, then we have the Stephen Foster Day after that. So a lot to talk about as the second half of the season starts to kick in and we start to march towards the Breeders' Cup. As always, thanks for watching. We appreciate our sponsor out there, Derby Wars, the best contest site out there. And also, most of all, you for watching. Uh, we hope you enjoyed all our Triple Crown coverage. On to the second half, and this is how we started. We'll see you right here next week on another edition of Horse Center. Until then, good luck.